Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Niyash Kumar Singh and we are getting started with a new series of tutorials where we'll be talking about a new tool to be understood by all of you. So we are getting started with another important tool of the industry today called as Load Runner. Now this Load Runner is actually a performance testing tool and will help you to measure the performance parameters of an application. Now this application can be any type of application or can be built on any sort of protocols and this can be very well accommodated with a new tool called as load runner now of course load runner has been into an existence from a long time but does have been evolving from time to time so today we'll be understanding that what is that load runner is all about and why it is trending into the market today so let's get started quickly and get a brief outline and introduction about this tool called as load runner As a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting started with a very basic outline of what exactly LoadRunner is all about. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be understanding what is LoadRunner, introduction to performance testing, types of performance testing, and the LoadRunner architecture. To get started, we talk about what exactly LoadRunner is all about. LoadRunner is a performance testing tool which was pioneered by Mercury in 1999. LoadRunner was later acquired by HPE, which is HP Enterprise, in 2006, where finally HP handed over the tool to another organization that is Microfocus in 2016. So right now, the current owner of this particular tool is Microfocus at the moment. LoadRunner supports various development tools, technologies, and communication protocols. In fact, this is the only tool in the market which supports a large number of protocols to conduct performance testing. Performance testing results produced by LoadRunner software are used as a benchmark against the other tools. Now, of course, that's so true that how exactly LoadRunner is trending into the market and what kind of uh, business share or stakes does the LoadRunner have when it comes to the performance testing of any particular application. In here, we do understand that there is a term called as protocol and protocol can be referred to as set of rules which are being followed for any application to be built and there are several protocols available which is supported by the load runner. Let's have a look on the next slide here. Why load runner? Of course, this is where we want to understand that why not other tools which are competing with load runner and why preferably load runner is something which is very important to understand performance testing. So load runner is not only the pioneer tool in the performance testing, but it is still a market leader in the performance testing paradigm. A recent assessment has proven that the load runner has about 85% of market share in performance testing industry. And that's where we can say that this is quite important tool to be learned by any performance testing engineer and be aware of that how exactly load runner functions and can help you to do all your necessary performance testing. In fact, adding broadly, the load runner tool can support any type of protocols as discussed earlier. And here is a quick list of what all things it can actually support. Right from RIA, which is rich internet application, Web 2.0, including the HTTP, HTML, AJAX, Flex, Silverlight, etc. Not only that, even mobile, SAP, Oracle, MS SQL servers, Citrix, RTE, Mail, and above all, Windows Socket as well. So there is no completed tool in the market which could offer such wide variety of protocols vested in the single tool. And that's where the load runner is more demanding into the market and providing you enterprise solutions for solving all your problem regarding the performance issues. Further to add, this can also add a lot of value from understanding that why performance testing could be really, really incredible at any point of time. Now here we are trying to understand that an estimated loss of $4.4 billion in revenue is recorded annually due to poor web performance. Now that's a huge amount. You know, $4.4 billion in revenue is recorded as a loss due to the poor web performance. Now this can be any type of application which could be ruled out of the market, or probably due to the downtime, people have stopped using them and the shares have gone down. So of course they have to roll over the product to another way or probably create a new application to take off the market again. Now in today's age of web 2.0, users click away if a website doesn't respond within eight seconds. Imagine yourself waiting for five seconds when searching for Google or making a friend request on the Facebook. 
We have examples such as those that recently hit Bank of America, online banking as well, or Amazon Web Services, Intuit, or BlackBerry. So there are big examples from big industries which are very well established, but still they do face performance challenges. According to Dune and Brand Street, 59% of 5 100 fortune companies experience an estimated 1.6 hours of downtime every week which might be broken into simple uh, forms or simple fragments but yes put together every week they have at least downtime of 1.6 hours of uh, server failures consider the average fortune 500 company with a minimum of 10,000 employees is paying a dollar of 56 per hour the labor part of the downtime cost for such an organization would be around $896,000 weekly. Now that's a huge amount of gain which is being paid out to the people to take care of it, translating into more than $46 million per year. Only a 5 minute downtime of Google.com on 19 August 2013 is estimated to cost the search giant as much as $545,000. So yes, now you can understand that why performance testing would be important no matter what kind of application you are preparing up and it is all about making sure that your application is up at the most of the time even if you are trying to make sure that what number of people are working on your application. At the same time, you just want to keep your customers happy or end users comfortable when they make use of your product and do not fail, face any kind of downtime which might turn out your user to any other product in the market. Also to add another example from the Amazon Web Services outage, it's estimated that the company's lost sales worth $1,100 per second due to the recent Amazon Web Services outage. Now when a software system is developed by an organization, it may encounter many scenarios that possibly result in performance latency. A number of factors causes declaring performance, that is degradation of the performance, and few of the examples may include something of them, like increased number of records present in the database, which takes quite longer to respond to your user when a request is made. Increased number of simultaneous requests made to the system, that means increasing the count of the concurrent users or simultaneous users working at any point, any point of time on a particular application or also can be said as a larger number of users accessing the system at a time as compared to the past. So gradual increase or a drastic increase in the number of users that too the simultaneous users can bring a lot of change and drastically a degradation on your performance of an application. And that's where again I say that performance testing will really add a lot of value to assure you that no matter what number of people are working on your application it will still be stable and and will provide you the necessary response time which you're looking at to provide to your end users. Number next is the types of performance testing. Now when it comes to the types of performance testing it basically means that a performance testing is not just a level it is a collection of multiple levels put together. Now performance testing is just not like any other ordinary level of testing like unit integration or system. Here it comprises of a lot of things and a lot of parameters to be measured and recorded for analyzing the performance issues which can be covered by major five type of them. Now, of course there are many other type of it but mainly there are five different sub levels of load runner sorry the performance testing to add more value about performance the upgradation. So we can conduct the performance testing in several ways for an application using load testing, stress testing, volume testing, endurance testing, and spike testing. In short and simple terms, load testing is when you test an application with limited number of users which are defined by the customer in order to check that if it is working, stable, and provides the necessary response time. When you try to move beyond that limit which is provided or asked by the customer or what you are expecting your customer count to be, you call it as stress testing. Now the only reason stress testing is conducted is to make sure that what is the threshold of my application. What if your threshold is just close to the limit which you want to provide to your market or end users? Now I want to push this crash limit to a little bit far away from the desired load limit. Volume testing is basically to test if what if simultaneous users try to log in at the same time. 
Now, simultaneous user exactly means that I have one million people trying to use a particular button or particular page at the same point of second. Okay. Now, when it comes to endurance testing, it is just the same count of people, probably one million users working on my application, but for a prolonged period of time. When I say prolonged period of time, it basically means that they are not simultaneously working on a particular page. They might be on different pages, but yes, back to back, there are continuous load, one after the other. So it's just not that a particular moment, which is heap, particular moment, which is spike for me, but not right now here, there are at least 100,000 people logging in every single hour, but not logging out. So back to back load being pushed to the application, how does the application behave? Last but not the least, of course, the spike, which basically involves the application which have a feature of having sudden increment in the number of users and a quick drop as well. Generally, when you talk about certain applications where there is a sale going on for just two minutes and there is a desired time defined for it, that means exactly at 9 a.m. the counter opens and whoever comes first, I'll give them the discounts or the offers. So now you would see that generally, Hardly 10,000 or 20,000 people are using this application, but today at the 9 a.m., due to the drastic offers which I'm providing or exciting offers which I'm providing to my users, there is a spike of at least 100,000 people. So right from 10,000 to 100,000 people, but all the offers ends in another just few minutes and the load again comes down to 10,000. So that's where a spike testing is involved to test such spikes in your usage from the number of users again. Well, we will be definitely covering all of them in more detail as we go across with the execution of the load runner. One last thing I wanted to talk about here is the load runner architecture, which is very important to be understood at this point of time before you can start working on the load runner itself. So load runner consists of four major components as displayed here. That is VUGen, controller analysis, agent machine, or load generator. Now let me quickly give you an overview of this with an example that what exactly could be the possibility of understanding these things. ViewGen is being the very first component which makes use of or you know producing the script for the virtual user generator. Okay, ViewGen stands for virtual user generator, which is an IDE or a rich coding editor allows you to prepare the script which you want to run. A ViewGen is used to replicate the system under load behavior. ViewGen provides a recording feature which records communication to and from the client and server in form of a coded script, also called as ViewGen script or virtual user script. So considering the above example, ViewGen can record or to simulate the following business process like surfing the product page on any particular application, checking out on an e-commerce website, payment processing, checking my account page, and so on. Whereas the controller is a component which basically allows you to uh, apply loads on the ViewGen script. So once a ViewGen script is finalized, controller is one of the main load runner component which controls the load simulation by managing and including a lot many other things. For example, how many users to simulate against each business process, behavior of the view users like ramp up or ramp down, simultaneous or interval, Nature of the load scenario, was it going to be a real life scenario or goal oriented scenario like based on SLAs, uh, which injectors to be used, collate results periodically, IP spoofing, error reporting, transaction reporting, etc. So this basically controller is the place where you design your scenario and you run your scenario to see the desired outputs. But of course, during the execution, there's something that is called as agent machines or load generators which actually manage to apply the load on the scenario which you just created. So load runner controller is responsible for simulating thousands of user. These V users consume hardware resources, for example, processor and memory, and putting a limit on the machine which is simulating them. Besides controller simulates these V users from the same machine and hence the result may not be precise. 
To address this concern, all V users are spread across various machines called as load generators. So it's just that it will be creating the instances of each user and any number of instances can be created with help of the load generator here. And basically that's what you call it as your virtual users. So of course, this is an automation tool. So you don't have really a real user doing that job for you because manually conducting this could be complicated. Once all this execution completes, then comes the role of the analysis. Once loaded scenario has been executed, the role of analysis component of load runner comes into picture. During the execution, controller creates a dump of results in raw form and contains information like which version of load runner created this result dump and what were the configurations and so on. All the errors and exceptions are logged into Microsoft Access Database named output.mdb. The analysis component reads this database file to perform various types of analysis and generates graphs. These graphs shows various trends to understand the reason behind errors and failures under load. Thus help to figure out whether optimization is requiring in SUL or the server, where SUL stands for system under load. So that's where basically analysis will provide you with support of necessary graphs and reports which will help you to understand the outcome of the scenario execution and will let you to do the necessary job done in order to improvise the performance of the application. Well, that was a quick discussion about understanding what exactly load runner is and why performance testing would be important for any particular application. So stay tuned for more. Of course, we are coming up with the next tutorials getting started with the hands-on on the load runner. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.